Okay, now what I'm going to do is show you how to do a, well, what is best described as a Y interchange. They are essentially the same as T interchanges, except they're much bigger, and thus kind of spell out a Y, kind of. Um, now, this particular method is essentially a full speed method, you know, the curves are going to be gentle curves, they're not going to be the harsh curves that I, I used last time. Um, these two here are just markers to show to show me where I am in constructing the thing. And it involves some use of the hole digging lots. Right, here's our first bit of highway. Starting pretty much at the edge of the table and because I'm on a medium city tile I'm going to need all the space I can get I need to start segregating the highway about sort of now-ish, yep in order to be realistic you've got to have plenty of time to merge on and off of these sorts of junctions to maintain the high speeds that they're designed for. This area here I'm going to demolish in its entirety and around I think there-ish I reckon we need our sixth dual four transition which is there. Right. Now we get our hole digger, well, ground lifter, and we lift up a nice quantity of ground. Oops. Oh, oh well, I can live with that. Okay. Yes, this is quite a lot of ground I'm lifting up. We need it. Right. Delete all these bits of road. Not that part, because I need it just... Uh, I'll put that there for now. And this. Again, these, these bits here, they're just markers because I've already semi-finished this junction kind of like here's one I prepared earlier <laughs> anyway right, in order to get the diagonal overpass we need to bury the through route in a tunnel and that's what the, the job is here and that's why we've lifted the floor up right so around here-ish yeah, I'm just there. I'm not worrying too much about the state of the slope on that part yet, but we need to flare out the sideways carriageways. And then take them... One goes along the side and one goes up and over. Let me just flatten this wayward bit of road here. There, okay. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the avenue as my slope generator. There we go. The reason I'm using avenue is because it has a nice, well, slightly more gentle slope than the road does, uh, but not quite as gentle as the rail line, because I don't want it to be rail line grade flat, because this is an intersection after all. Okay, those go off in a diagonal direction like that. Heading back here though, what we've got to do is now we've got to kind of work out to leave enough space for our 
tunnel. Now, you'll see here, I have the grid lines on. You can do that by pressing G. Shows you exactly where stuff is. And for the tunnel, we have to leave... I think that much space either side. Three, yes. At least when we're doing it by diagonals, we've got to leave three squares worth each side. Because the tunnel entrance drags the surrounding terrain down and you can't do anything with it after that. So we connect that bit to our Royal Highway in this bit here, like so. And I have a sneaky suspicion I might not have left myself enough space on this side, but we'll soon see. Because on this side, what I've got to do is firstly I need to avenue that area there, and secondly I need to get my wide curves. And this is the outer curve, and lo and behold, I have not left myself enough room, which is kind of irritating, so I'll have to delete that tunnel and redo it again in a second. Right, the reason the avenue is here is so that when we plop the curve down, the slopes around it can form nicely, roughly, kind of to the grade of the avenue. I'll drag it along this way a bit. There we go. Instead of just dragging the whole look down and look, looking horrible, it will conform to the avenue's slope profile. So when, when I place that, bang! You see, very little up here. It moved upwards slightly, but not by much. That means it's now a nice, gentle up and over curve. Here, however... It's where it starts to get fun. Because I've now got to... Oh, I can live with that. Do that. Thankfully, we don't have to have full height flyovers because we're using avenue tunnels. new tunnels, for some reason, don't require as much room. Okay, so connect these two bits together, and that bit there as well, and finally add in the inner curve here. We ha Oh yeah, and finally we've got to do the lane shifts as well, so that one there, and eek, that's right up against the slope, so what I'll have to do is avenue Hopefully, it'll let me put it there. It will. Fantastic. Okay. Right. And there we have the diagonal overpass. It's not really an overpass. And now I'm going to zoom out and show you what I did earlier. You see I've done the other two sections exactly the same as I've done here. Except, um, obviously, mirrored and on the separate part there. This particular bit you've got to be mindful of leaving enough room between your tunnel entrance and your curve and the start of this slope here. If you have them too close together this curve will drag down this slope and it will look rubbish. So make sure you leave yourself enough room. I've left myself I don't know, about 15 tiles worth of room there. It might sound like a lot, but that is the kind of scale you'll be working to on a full-size, full-speed interchange like this. So yes, make sure you have plenty of wide transition space here for the sims to merge and diverge. Again, each side, each side. And traffic priority wise the route priorities go along here is the is the main route along here and up is the secondary route the reason being is because you've got the through road going underneath and around here and lastly this is the tertiary movement and that is 
how to build a wind change. <laughs>